G'day True Achievers, my name is Nemalok, and today we are going to be looking at the five co-op levels you will need to play to unlock the three co-op achievements in Piku Niki on Xbox One. We are going to start by unlocking You're Not Helping for kicking your co-op partner 50 times, the Gotta Go Fast achievement for completing a level in under three minutes, and unlocking the five co-op trophies needed as part of the Collector achievement. Note that you don't need to actually complete most of these levels. Once you have the trophy, you're done. We are only going to fully complete level 3. Firstly, you're going to need a second controller. PQ Niku does not have online support, so you're going to have to play local co-op. It helps to have a partner, but you can easily play both characters, so it's not a requirement. I will be completing the tasks by myself, but I'll let you know where a co-op partner might make things easier. To start with, select co-op from the main menu, and select the first level. Press any button on either controller when prompted to start playing. In case you are not aware, the red character's name is Piku, and the orange character's name is Miku. I am going to be referencing them by their name when completing tasks in cooperation, because sometimes only one specific character will have access to the section I am talking about. Other times, both will, and it won't matter which character does which set of tasks. It should be pretty obvious, so hopefully there is no confusion. Jump both characters down to the middle of a starting room. We are going to start by unlocking the You're Not Helping achievement. This achievement is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to show you how to make it a little easier. Firstly, we are going to position Niku against this blue door. Do not kick it down, we need the door to remain closed. With Niku in place, we are going to move in with Piku and start kicking. The door stops Niku from falling backwards. We could do this against a regular wall, but against a regular wall, Niku will be thrown upwards, and we will have to wait for them to land between kicks. In this position, we can quickly kick them over and over again until the achievement unlocks. Once you have the You're Not Helping achievement, kick down the door and proceed to the right. In this section, we are supposed to drop down a box to let us jump up to the right. However, instead, we're just going to boost jump PQ up. To boost jump, have Niku stand in the right corner below the ledge and jump on top of them with PQ. Now have one hand ready to press the jump button on both controllers and the other to move right with PQ. If you have a co-op partner handy, this part is a little easier. Jump Niku up and at the height of their jump, jump PQ up and off of Niku to the far right. Jumping in this way gives you a little more height and will be needed in later parts of this walkthrough. Head right with both Piku and Niku. As Piku, push the crate to the right and jump down into the chasm. If it doesn't clear the ledge to the left, drop in and push it down to Niku. As Niku, use the crate to jump up to the ledge on the left side of the chasm. Jump both characters across to the ledge on the far right, and standing Piku on top of Niku, jump up to the right to get out of the chasm. Continue right as Piku, and once you drop down to the other side, head left and stand on the switch to open the door for Niku. Take both characters right and head across the zip line. Continue right, jumping over the short wall. When you come to the next wall, you'll see a prompt to swing from a hook. Jump directly up and swing up to the left. You want to get onto the platform directly above you. You can easily swing around to the top from the first swing anchor, but you can also use the second swing anchor to the left. With both characters on the ledge, boost jump up to the right to find the Piku and Niku 1 trophy. Pause the game, go to level select, and select level 2. Once you start level 2, head right with both characters. Sit Niku on the red switch. Continue right with Piku until you hit the purple lake. Jump over the ball and kick it back to the red switch on your left. I can see the red ball just didn't make it here, so I have to go back and nudge it in. Jump up and to the left from the purple pool, and you'll see another red ball. Push it down to the right and left until it clears the blue door that is currently open on Niku's level. 
as Niku, kick the red ball left and onto the red switch that you were previously standing on. As both characters head right, and continue right past the two red switches. When you come to the ledge on the right hand side, boost jump pick you up and have them stand on the red switch. As Niku, head left and ride the purple water up into the cavity in the ceiling. Kick the button on the far right to open the blue door. As Piku, get off the red switch to turn off the purple water and drop Niku back down to the bottom, but have them stand on the pipe. Have your hands ready on both characters' analog sticks or have your partner ready. This part requires a little bit of synchronization. Move Piku back onto the red switch and as the purple water shoots Niku back up, move Niku right so that they get pushed up onto the ledge with Piku. With both characters, head right through the open blue door. When you get to the wall with the two red switches, jump Piku over to the right side. This is a timing switch. We are going to run into one or two more of these, but they are pretty simple. You have to kick both switches at approximately the same time. You might find that you need to push both characters against the button and kick to ensure they kick in the right direction. But I found that by initially pushing both characters towards their respective buttons, I just had to kick and they would both kick in the right direction. I didn't have to continuously push towards the button while doing so. Once you open the next blue door, head right through the opening, over the first pool, and under the next section. As Piku, jump up onto the ledge to your right. Jump up the narrow section above you, and a blue platform will close, giving you enough height to jump over to your right. Stand on the red switch and the black T section above Niku will start rotating. You're supposed to jump back off the red button when the T section points right, making a capital E without the top or bottom R. As Niku, you then need to jump across the black T section to the left where you see the red ball. Kick the red ball off of the switch. You'll notice that I managed to kick it over to where Piku is. This was a complete fluke, but it did allow me to skip the last switch. With the red ball off the switch, another platform moves out of the wall to your right. Jump Niku across this platform and over to the right where you see the zip line. If you fall into the section with Piku, just boot jump one of the characters out. If you manage to get the red ball into this section like I did, you can immediately jump both characters out to the right. Take the zip line across to the right. As you can see, there is a switch directly to your right that enables a platform directly above Piku. This would have been how I got my second character out if I didn't get the red ball in accidentally. Drop both characters into the pit below the zip line. Have each character stand on one of the two red switches to either side of you to open the red door and allow the ball to drop down. This part is a bit trickier if you're by yourself. You need to kick the black ball over to the blue switch to open the blue door. If you have a partner, having the second kick handy to push the ball across certainly does help. It's too awkward to pull off as one person playing both characters. So by yourself, you're just going to have to play as one character. If you're just by yourself, have PQ position the ball so it is midway up the little ramp at the edge of the flat. You should be able to kick it straight across to the blue switch. Take both characters right through the blue door, over the short wall and across the purple pond. Head right over the hill and jump over the next short wall. Head all the way to the right until you come to the blue door. Boost jump PQ up and onto the ledge above and kick the blue ball down to the left. Drop down into the pit to the left where you now have two blue balls. You need to kick both of them out to the red switches on either side. Again, it helps to have a co-op partner to give you the extra kick, but this part is easily manageable by yourself. 
A good trick to doing this yourself is to push the ball up the wall in a roll. The ball will naturally roll back onto you, in which point you can immediately kick the ball upwards and give it the height you need to let you jump back up and kick it towards the respective switch. You can also jump while under the ball to headbutt it upwards, but I have found that this doesn't normally give you enough height, so kicking it is your best tool. With both the middle and the right switch pressed down, head left back to the first red switch, and boost jump pick you up onto the ledge directly above it and to the right. Kick the blue ball down to the red switch. This one is a lot easier than the other two. Head right through the newly opened door, and at the top of the first peak, ride the zip line up to the left. Jump and swing from another anchor swing, swinging around and up onto the platform directly above you. Here you will find the Piku and Niku 2 trophy. Pause the game, go to level select, and select level 3. This level doesn't have any trophy, but it is by far the easiest level to complete, so we will be using it to unlock the Gotta Go Fast achievement. For this achievement, you need to complete a level in three minutes. I'm sure there are other levels that are just as easy if you have a partner, but this level practically plays itself. Start by heading left with both characters. Kick the time switch between both characters and drop each character down one of the two sides below. You will fall down to the bottom where each character will have a car directly to their right. Have both characters interact with their respective cars to get in. Before we start, I'm going to talk about the controls because they're a little bit different here. Firstly, we're moving our car by simply moving left or right. For most of this level, you're going to be wanting to hold in right with both characters and they should practically auto complete the level. You can boost with A as long as the bar in the middle of the car is full. You'll notice that every time you boost, it depletes and starts recharging. I use boost a bit here because I wanted to see if it makes much difference. It really didn't. You risk toppling a car over for one, but I did find that when I completed the race, I hadn't completed it any quicker than if I had just moved at regular speed. There are a few points where boosting makes things a bit easier, but I'll point them out as they come. And finally, press X to exit your car. This is an important function as you want to make sure that you stay away from this button until the end. As I said, the rest of this level is mostly just a race. There are ways to do this faster, but with minimal effort, you should come in well under the three minute mark. For the most part, just hold right on both handlock sticks and both characters should effectively auto-complete the race. Once Peaky goes over this black seesaw, it's going to fall and block the path. Just keep moving forwards and Niku should automatically continue down the alternate path. Look out for when the arrow markers change, here. Make sure that you head left down the next ramp as you will otherwise hit a dead end. With both characters at the bottom, I can proceed right. Notice here that you've got a section with two crates in the wall to your left. If for any reason you lose your car, you can return here for a black car, which is also faster than the two you start with. You shouldn't have to do this during the time trial. This next part is the only thing that might stuff you up. When you get to the next ramp, you can boost off of it to reach into the clouds. Try to do this, it's incredibly useful, and as long as you do it with one character, you completely bypass the obstacle that can ruin your day. If one of the characters drive off this seesaw, it will tilt to the right. If you still have a character behind you, their passage becomes effectively blocked. If you miss the cloud, you can overcome this obstacle in three ways. Firstly, you can have your first character just wait before driving over the seesaw and drive both characters over together. Secondly, if you do drive your first character over and block your second, you can drive your first character back to tilt the seesaw back to the original position and wait for the second character. As long as both characters are on the seesaw when it tilts, you shouldn't have any problem moving forward. Thirdly, and I'm not sure why you would want to do this unless you are playing with a partner that effectively stranded you here, 
but you can discard your car and return back to the left where you'll find the secret car I mentioned earlier. This gives you another chance of boosting over the ramp and up into the clouds. Apart from that, you'd effectively have to move forward on foot. Continue right. There's really no other obstacle here, so just keep driving until you reach the finish line. Shortly after, you will drive into a pool of water. Exit the cars, swim down and swim out to the right. Keep heading right and you will come to a boat. Have both characters stand in the two spaces on the right side of the boat and have them both crouch at the same time to complete the level. As long as you ran under three minutes, you'll unlock the Gotta Go Fast achievement. If you didn't, head back to the title screen and start again. As you can see, I came in with just over 43 seconds to spare and still had plenty of room for improvement. Assuming you came in under three minutes, head on to the next level where we'll find the next co-op trophy. This level to me was the most annoying. Both Piku and Niku are tied together. And yes, there are plenty of opportunities to get stuck. Luckily, the trophy is found pretty early on. I'm going to show you the easiest way to get through the first part of the level, but if things don't fall how you want them to, or if you otherwise get stuck and can't seem to get out, just restart the level. Firstly, we're going to be dropping down to the left. We don't want to drop all the way to the bottom. If you have a partner, it might be easier to get Piku and Nuki back up to the top, but by yourself, this can be a real pain. You want to start by jumping Piku up to the ledge, follow with Niku standing on the right side. We are going to drop Piku down into the drop, but hold right to push against the right wall. Follow in with Niku, and Piku and Niku should slide down the wall and come to a rest on the spiky ledge. Now you want to make sure Piku and Niku are separate. Either have both of them stand next to each other, or move Piku out from under Niku while Niku is jumping. We don't want Niku standing on Piku, because doing so will drop both of them off in the next section and take us straight to the bottom. Walk Piku off the ledge to the left slowly, but make sure to be holding right with Niku. Piku should fall and hang from the ledge with Niku holding them from above. Hold right with Piku and they should push right with the little swing momentum they have. Slowly walk off the ledge to the left with Niku, but as soon as they go over, push back to the right. They should fall down and come out directly below on a bubbled section with a red ball. You can get back up here if you fall all the way to the bottom, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory how to, just incredibly annoying. There are a bunch of red springboards that will throw you around and get you stuck. In my opinion, if you fail to hit this ledge, restart and try again. You might also be able to catch onto this ledge here to the left and jump back up. I've tried this once or twice, and while it is doable, it's a lot trickier than rappelling down like I have. From the bubbled section, kick the red ball across to your right. If the ball falls into the gap, this isn't as bad. Follow the ball down and just kick it all the way to the right. The red springboards are still below to make your life a misery. You might want to restart out of frustration. But getting the ball across to the right hand side from the bottom is a lot easier than making your way back up to the top from the bottom. Follow the red ball across to the next bubbled section and kick it to the right down into the spiky section. Drop down to the spiky section and continue pushing the ball to the right. You might find this easiest by pushing yourself between the ball and the spikes from the left while rolling. You can do this to effectively push the ball across each spike individually. Push the ball into the gap with a zip line and drop down after it. Head right and push the ball down the stairs to the left. If needed, standing on the left side of the ball and letting Peaky slowly walk the ball left is also effective. Once the ball rolls down the steps to the left, it will drop into a section and press down a red switch, opening the door. Congratulations, this level is almost over. Head right. You will come to a drop with two paths. Do not drop down the left path. If you do, restart the level. You can't reach the trophy anymore after dropping down from the left side. Jump across to the right. You can still get stuck here, but the wall gives you a save. If you get stuck by having Piku and Niki on opposite sides of a drop, being pinned down by the rope, have the character on the left jiggle back and forth. 
either one of two things will happen. Firstly, the character on the left might give the character on the right enough momentum to pull them down to the right, but it's especially likely when passing the first bump. As the red springboard in the centre can trigger and push your right side character upwards, taking the other one with them. Secondly, the character on the left might catch against the corner of the bump just long enough to get the friction needed to pull themselves out. Once you make it across to the right side, drop down and continue right. You will enter a room with the next trophy. Jump up and across the next bump. Again, you might get stuck, but it'll be easier to jiggle the inside character to get out as there's no penalty for falling. So if you have to try again, no biggie. Jump across to the section to your right and pick up the Piku and Niku 3 trophy. Pause the game, select level select, and select level 8. Now, we have another level where Piku and Niku are tied together. Luckily, it isn't as frustrating as the fourth level. And fortunately, the trophy is just as early in the level. Head right, down and past the first two water pipes. Use the third water pipe to ride up towards the platform above you and to the right, and kick the big green ball down. You'll want to kick it into the chasm to the right, but if it doesn't make it, just drop down and push it over. Head right and jump over the wall by jumping on the big green ball. Head right until you come to your first anchor spin. This part here is another section that's easier with a partner, but doable by yourself. You'll be swinging PQ and Niku across a big gap in tandem. I found the easiest way to synchronize this was by having one hand on both of the interaction buttons and one hand on both of the analog sticks. Jump up and hang from the first swing anchor as PQ. While holding on as PQ, have Niku swing to the right and hang from the next swing anchor. As Piku, release from the first swing anchor and swing across to the third. Keep doing this until you reach the last swing anchor and drop down onto the ledge. Head right and drop into the chasm with the basketball hoop. Head left and head through the hidden section in the wall. Head around to the top of the little cave for the Piku and Niku 4 trophy. Pause the game, select level select, and select the ninth level. As Niku, jump up to the right and kick the lever. As Piku, stand on top of the section where the black platform lowered. As Niku, kick the lever again to raise Piku up. As Piku, head right and kick the lever in the dip. As Niku, push right against the black loop section. You should immediately fall into it as the gap comes past and fall out to the right when it comes back around. Take both characters right. Stand Niku on the red switch and jump PQ up onto the black platform that raised out of the ground. As Piku, jump up and kick the blue switch to your right. Do this twice to open the door for Niku. Take Niku right over the short wall and kick the lever. As Piku, head right and make your way through the black loop like we did with Niku earlier. Continue right with Piku and you will eventually hit a set of springboards that both shoot you out to the right and trigger the door to open for Niku. Take both characters right until you come to the two red switches. Jump both characters up the two grey springs directly above to get into the section above you. Jump both characters up so that they are on opposite sides of the room with the two red switches. Kick the time switches to release the two red balls.
boost jump Niku up to the middle platform. At the top, kick the two red balls down. As Piku, make sure the two red balls are down to the bottom and stand next to the black looped section so that we have it in view. As Niku, kick the lever to start spinning the black looped section. And once the opening is at the top, kick the lever again to stop it. As Piku, you want to move both of the red balls into the middle of the black loop section. Make sure you're in there with them. Once they are in the middle, have Niku kick the lever again. As the black loop section spins around, it will spit both the red balls and Piku back out to the bottom. Kick or push the red balls onto the two red switches to your right. Continue right through the opened door, hopping over the rocks and taking the zip line across the pool. We need Niku for a boost jump. Drop Niku down to the black loop section, and since it's still spinning, you should be able to just drop in and have them fall out at the bottom. Take them right to meet back up with Piku. Head right until you come to a wall. Boost jump PQ up to the tree. Jump into the tree and jump up to the small diamond shaped platform above you and to the left. Jump across the platform to your left, holding up the two red balls that are tied together. Jump across to the left and use the anchor swings to swing along to the left into the hidden section of the wall. In here, you will find the PQ and Niku 5 trophy. If you are following all of our walkthrough, this should be the last trophy you need to unlock the collector achievement, which in turn should be the last achievement you need to fully complete the PQ Niku achievement list. If you haven't yet, I'd recommend going back and properly exploring this game. It's been a lot of fun, and there are plenty of other hidden tidbits that are completely unrelated to achievements. Hopefully you had as much fun with this game as I did, and got as much out of these walkthroughs as I did putting them together. My name is Nemlock, and as always, happy hunting.